Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Warren Canonigo, and you're watching the FYI sessions where Filipino learners can savor bite-sized English lessons. With me, Teacher Warren, and my favorite references, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and Princess Hall Grammar and Composition by Gary Forlini and co-authors. Today is a pronunciation drill day, but before we start, I'd like to introduce you to a vowel sound. Vowel sound. You don't really say vowel. You don't. You don't really define the sound of the letter e after the w in the word vowel. You pronounce it as vowel. A vowel sound. So this phoneme is a vowel sound. It's characterized by the letter i, lowercase letter i, with a macron or macron on top of it. And when you see this in a transcription, then the pronunciation is i, i, as in ice. Fight, sky, I. Okay. Thank you. So, the pronunciation drill for this episode has the category name, words with alternative pronunciation. Okay. So, how do we know if there is an alternative pronunciation or alternative function to the word? So easy. When you open the dictionary, you see two transcriptions. If, let's say, for example, even if there is a change of the stress or a change, of, you know, a minor change in the pronunciation, you will know that the function of the word or the meaning stays the same because there are two transcriptions uh, being presented. Usually, if it's Merriam-Webster dictionary, uh, the first transcription is the more popular one, the more popularly used by. Uh, native speakers. Now there are also times when the change of the stress, which will definitely affect the pronunciation, will also mean the change of function and the change of meaning. Okay? So let's start. Perido or peridot. Perido or peridot. You can let the T be a silent one, or you can just pronounce it. Perido or peridot. It's a kind of a precious stone or a gemstone. You can actually research if you don't know the meaning of the word. You can research or check pictures in Google. Okay, next is edged or edged. Edged or edged. That's just the same meaning. Gram or graham. Again, gram or Graham, but never Graham. Next. Menu or menu. Menu or menu, but never menu. Okay, next. Poem or poem. 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 Again, poem or poem. Poem. Okay. Next is thesis or thesis. Thesis or thesis. The same meaning. Next. Data or data. The same meaning. But I love data, actually. It sounds more sophisticated, at least for me. Okay, next is, you can say toward, meaning silent W, or you can say toward. Toward. Toward or toward. Okay, next is news or news. News or news. Okay, the same meaning still. Next is, you can say theory, theory or theory, theory. The more common pronunciation in the, well, as far as my experience is concerned, the pronunciation theory is more popular, but I really love theory. It's easier to pronounce and it's more defined. Next is sentence or sentence. Sentence, sentence. Well, the second pronunciation, the one with the silent T, is actually being adapted from my training there. The pronunciation is an adaptation from what I have learned from the training. Although, uh, in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the transcription clearly uh, 
dictates the pronunciation sentence. Okay. Next is antibiotic or antibiotic. So you can say anti or anti. Next is pneumonia or pneumonia. Again, pneumonia or pneumonia. Okay. Same meaning. Minutes, minute. When you say minute, it's a unit of time. When you say minute, it means very small or very tiny. So in this case, the change of the pronunciation also meant a change in the definition. Okay, next is, again, minute, unit of time, minute, very small or very tiny. Prayer is the message that you deliver is an invitation or in your communication with your God or to a higher being and, and prayer. Uh, by the way, prayer is the message. Prayer is the one delivering the message. Again, prayer, prayer, prayer. Like the transcription only shows p, r, e, and r. So, prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer is the message. Prayer is the one uh, delivering it. Okay. Next is address. If you say address, if the stress is in the first syllable, then it means the location, the geographical location. Like when you say Sangin Tulada City, Cebu, Philippines, zip code 6038. When you say address, address, it means speech. For example, welcome, address. Something like that. Okay? Again, address, location, address, speech. Record, record. So you say record. If the stress is in the first syllable, it means to. Uh, it means it means the function is noun. So in the document itself. When you say record. If the stress is in the second syllable, record. It means to document or to to list. Okay, to to document to enter a data into a certain kind of media. Again, record noun, record verb. Okay, next, comment, comment. Comment means the message itself. But if the stress is in the second syllable, comment it means the act of commenting. It's the uh, it's the act of saying something about uh, about a thing or someone or something that is uh, being seen. Rebel, 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 first syllable, that's a noun, and rebel, second syllable, that's uh, the act of rebellion. Rebel, rebel. Graduate, graduate. Okay, so in the graduate, uh, Chwasan, graduate, it's the person who will graduate. Graduate is the act of graduating. So, if it's a noun, graduate. If it's a verb, graduate. So, for example, there are 500 graduates. Or, 500 learners will graduate. Okay. Next, duplicate, duplicates. Okay, when you say duplicate, it's the thing. It's the actual thing uh, which is already the product of the duplication process. The act of producing the duplicate is duplicating. So duplicate. So duplicate noun, duplicate verb. Certificate is the noun. Certificate is the verb. So certificate is the document. And certificate is the process of making the certificate. Certificate, certificate. Next, almonds, almonds, could be silent L or could be pronounced L. Almonds or almonds. Next, finance or finance, finance or financy. It could be with a lowercase i with a maker or it could be uh, the uh, sound, finance or finance. The same meaning. Next, fragile or fragile, the same meaning, fragile or fragile. Next, 
hostile or hostile, same meaning, era or era, same meaning, buffet, buffet. Of course, buffet is that it's a table where the food is displayed and the guests can just approach that table. So it's the, it's the, it's a dining setup and it's the setup itself, buffet. But when you say buffet, it means a strike. No, a sharp strike using your hand. Okay, in Cebuano we call it sumbag. No? In Filipino we call it suntok. Buffet. Okay. Filet, fillet. Okay, that's the same meaning. Filet, fillet. Same meaning as a noun and same meaning as a verb. You can say fillet or filet. Okay, next is figure or figure. You can say gear, you can say gur. Figure, figure. They're the same in the name. Next is... Okay. Tarpaulin. Usually in the Philippines, what I usually hear, again, as far as my opinion and, and as far as my experience is concerned, I usually hear people say tarpaulin. Tarpaulin. It's actually tarpaulin. Tarpaulin. The stress is in the second syllable. Tarpaulin, tarpaulin, and then the vowel sound in the first syllable, which is star, is a. Ah. Ah, remember the letters, lowercase letter a, with the diuresis, a, ah. tar, and then the second syllable has the vowel sound a. Ah. Remember the a ah as in law, and no or pa, pa, tarpaulin, tarpaulin or Tarpaulin, but tarpaulin is uh, more popular than tarpaulin. And then this one, the last is, you can say t with a schwa sound, uh, t, t. You can also say tail, tail. I will go to the church or I will go to the church. Okay. So I hope you've learned something from this episode. And I'm so excited already for the next one. See you soon. Bye.